to interrupt uh, all this lighthearted sharing that you're doing. But it is 11 o'clock. <laughs>
not, we will go ahead and move into our opening hymn, Angela. Jesus calls us on 398, first, second, and last. And 
I need your love and your concern, which I know I have. I'm sorry I said that wrong. I appreciate all your love and all your concerns, and I am depending on it. And I'm going to be all right. Amen. 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 Josephine, thank you for that uh, expression of faith, even though uh, you have the heart condition that the doctors are finding it difficult to treat, you're trusting in the Lord, and you express joy for the Tenney Chapel members who have been supported and uh, who stood there with you. God bless you. God bless you. Other prayer concerns? No? Yes, Joe Nance. Uh, Peggy had her nuclear stress test read and analyzed uh, in Tyler, and the results indicate a need for a heart catheterization that's scheduled for July 14th. We lift Peggy up in prayer. <coughs> My friend Wayne here is uh, observing the first anniversary of his wife Dana's death today, and uh, we lift him up. Other prayer concerns, other joys. Yes, Melba, oh, no, you're pointing. It's good to see Richard back. Oh, yes, uh, Richard Brewer. It's good to see you back in, in church. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We need to remember the Tommy Boyd and his family at the loss of their, his wife. George Ann. George Ann, yes. Uh, they need to air prayers. We lift up Tommy. Uh, Boyd and his family as they adjust to the death of their loved one, George Ann. I know there are other prayer concerns and other joys, and you will lift them up silently as we go to God together. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you hear our prayers, that you know what's going on within us, and you care. Lord, we have had expressed here today. Uh, Requests for traveling mercies, joys at uh, the birth of a baby, the remembrance of an anniversary of death, uh, an expression of concern about a medical report, and the anticipation of procedures that lie ahead. Lord, you are able, no matter what our circumstances, to help us through them and to bless us and to bring blessings out of these circumstances. For this we give you thanks. And Lord, we also want to give you thanks for the evidence of your mercy. You have blessed us in so many ways. And for these things we give you thanks. They are a testimony to the good things that you were able to do. Help us, Lord, to have faith in you and to commit our lives to your service. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, let the church say, Amen. Amen. We come now to our time of offering gifts to the Lord. We do this gladly, knowing that our God is a God of blessing. I have a
Savior like a shepherd lead us on 381? Verses first, second, and last again. Um, 
So even though we've talked about a lot of things that we, y'all, you guys would have to make, all the adults here have to make choices too. Marcella had to decide if she was going to overcome her fear of down under and go with her granddaughter to New Zealand. Was that a hard decision for you? No. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> she wanted that trip. I wanted that. That's right. So here's the good news. The Bible tells us that not only are we going to have to make decisions and choices, but that God is going to help us make those decisions and choices. Sometimes we might just be choosing ham or turkey, but sometimes we might have to make a, a decision that is more like, am I going to make a good choice to help someone or a bad choice to hurt someone? The reality is, yesterday I made a bad choice because it, it would have been so easy in hindsight to say, I'm sorry, Allie, what I, I made a bad decision. But I let my pride get in my way, and so I missed that opportunity. So the good news is that God, I hope and pray, <laughs> will forgive me. We'll see if Allie forgives me. But um, the good news is we know for certain that God will forgive us. So, heck, you'll have to work on Allie on, the, on her part of, of that as well. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, Chauncey's going to uh, read to us today is uh, verse 12 um, out of chapter 6 of Romans. And it's going to say, don't let sin reign in your mortal body. If you, well, now when I say reign, I mean R-E-I-G-N, like a king reigns over a nation. So what does it mean if sin reigns in your body? Yeah, like it takes over. So Paul's prayer was, don't let sin take over my body. So I want you to think about good choices this week. We're going to do something a little bit different. Um, pastor's going to read us what Paul says about choices. And I want you guys to help me read from a poem, a famous poem written by Robert Frost called what? The road not taken. That's right. So, there's four of you. I want you to, who had the first paragraph? James. Okay, stand up in a nice, loud, clear, theatrical voice. With emotion. <laughs> Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. Then me one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it went in the road. You the second paragraph. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better plan because it was grassy and was everywhere. So as for that, the passing there had more than really about the same. The third paragraph. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trod the black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how many leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I should be telling this with a sigh, some more ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I... I took the less, the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you give us choices, and you give us the promise that you will help us to make a good choice. Remind us that every decision we make affects not only ourselves, but more importantly, others. Remind us that it is easier in the long run to make a good decision and do the right thing. We ask this in thy name. Amen. Yeah. Who wants candy? You will take a couple and just pass it down. You've been <laughs> Sermon, and I, I just like for you to hear it. It's different, 
as I, uh, as I uh, played the uh, recording earlier, this is not a song you would normally expect to be heard in church, but it has deep, deep meaning. Won't you listen and enjoy? Yeah, we used to say you never hear this song in your church. Now we've had it, unless you invite us. <laughs> Put me on the stove and call me down. Jesus, I wish I was an onion. I wish you was a stew. That I could get cooked in you, cooked real good. I'll be the onion, you be the stew if you would. I'll be the onion, you be the stew. Jesus, I wish I was a raisin. Wish you was the dough, and I could get baked in you, baked real nice. I'll be the raisin, you be the dough that will rise. I'll be the raisin, you be the dough. Oh, five degrees, you still have to go. Let me on the stone and call me down. So long. <laughs> we left the kazoo at home. <laughs> Jesus, I wish I was a catfish. Wish you was a frying pan. But I'd get fried in you, nice and crisp. And never remember all those things on the bottom I thought I missed. Never remember what I thought I missed. Oh, five oh, in the Put me Put on the show and call me done. Jesus, I wish I was an onion. I wish you was the sin. But I'd get cooked in you, cooked real bad. Five degrees of skillet, well, I'll have a little fun. A little voice once told me. That's how the West was won. Put me on the stove and call me done. If I had real good sense, I'd say the benediction and we'd go home. <laughs> sermons on Romans. And Paul's not easy to understand, but uh, we're going to try and break down this message. But let's hear the word of God from the sixth chapter of Romans, verses 12 through 23. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity 
and to greater and greater iniquity. So now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. As always, I invite you to be in prayer as I seek to interpret the Word of God. Let's pause for prayer. Amen. As I said, this is a continuation of the sixth chapter of Romans that we introduced last week. And you may recall, those of you who were here last week, that Paul said to, when we are baptized as Christians, we are buried. The old life that we have lived has died. And we, when we rise up from the waters, we, arise, we rise as new people who have been reborn. We have new life within us. And Paul continues to talk about that and encourages people to live as new people, to let the old people we have been be put to death and we rise up as the new people that God is creating in us. And we said that some examples of that are if we in the past have been selfish, then as new people who rise up from uh, that old life, we become generous. And if we have been bitter, if we have had hatred toward someone, then the new life that we have is life that is kind and that is loving. The old person has died and the new person has risen up. And Paul today says that now if we fail to let that old person die and a new person be raised up, that we have got a problem that we will be dealing with. Because as he said, the wages of sin is death. That's what I'm on the front of the worship book. The wages of sin is death. Now, we know that this can refer to the final judgment when uh, sinners are judged to be unrighteous and the way to the, the uh, judgment is that those people who, who have not uh, been faithful to God uh, suffer eternal death. Now, we can understand that. But I want to suggest to you that Paul here is talking about more than just uh, eternal death or damnation or the final judgment. If we fail to rise up and become the new people God is calling us to be, you and I can find ourselves in a kind of living death. That is, we can find ourselves living lives that are not fulfilling, lives that are not rich and full, that lack joy, the kind of joy that the Lord wants us to have. Now there are lots of ways we can talk about uh, uh, that kind of living, the choices that we make to live lives that are less than what God calls them to be. And I could name uh, sins that I suspect some of you have committed, and I could talk about those today. But rather than do that, I thought I'd talk with you about some of the bad choices I have made and how I have experienced something of the wages of sin in my own life. And I want to talk about a safe sin. Um, one of the, the, you know, I can talk about some things that would really be interesting to you, but, <laughs> but um, I, I'll keep some of those things to myself and talk about uh, some that are not so embarrassing. One of the things that I have done, and uh, I think gluttony is a sin because you can allow eating to get in the way of actually serving God and committing our lives to God. And uh, one of the things that I have done is overeat, and it's, it's been a real problem for me. Um, in fact, I have uh, reflected on it, and at times in my life, rather than serving the God of all creation. I think sometimes I have served 
a god whose name was haagen <laughs> was a pork chop or spare rib or something like that. And, uh, you know, I can laugh about it now, but it's serious. Jim Laurent was with me at Monk's Pizza when it was open. Jim, uh, do you recall how many slices I had? You had about three pizzas. <laughs> Jim is lying. <laughs> But I did have an awful lot, and more, more than I should have had. And, uh, you know, in fact, I, I was in Arlington some years ago, and uh, there was a guy who came to Arlington from, from New Orleans. He was part of that uh, Katrina uh, evacuation, you know, after they were devastated by Hurricane Katrina. He came to Dallas Fort Worth there and opened up a restaurant. His name was Damien. He called his restaurant Damien. Well, Sandy and I used to like to go there, and um, one time I went without Sandy, and actually more than one time, because he had really good food. And um, what I did, without really thinking about it, I think I actually ordered two meals. He served some delicious fried pork chops along with, he had some good gumbo, and I ordered the food, and Damien, who was in the business of selling food, looked at me and said, Mr. Neely, you're eating too much. Now, that, that's a statement, isn't it? When the guy who's in the business of selling the food said, for your own good, for the sake of your, your own health, you know, you need to cut back. And I thought about it, and I said, you know, I could use some more praying instead of always just thinking about filling my belly. But the, the fact is, when I have overeaten, and just before I came here a year ago, I had just lost about 30 pounds, and I knew I needed to do it because my health was beginning to be affected. And one of the things that occurred to me once I lost some of that weight was that I'm so happy that I'm getting my life back. You hear what I'm saying when I say that? I'm getting my life back. I was in a spiral that was like a living death. I had made some choices that were unhealthy for me. And what Paul is saying is that we as people who make the choices we do can make some very bad choices that lead to our own harm, that lead to some devastation in our lives. And he said, be careful with that. Learn to become a slave of righteousness rather than a slave of your own desires, slaves to sinfulness. Learn to let God guide you so that you can become the person that God is calling you to be. And that's when I got really interested in the lyrics that Lindy Hearn uh, helped to write. Uh, the words to that song, put me on the stove and call me done. I mean, it's a fun song, but when, as I really listened to what he was saying, he said, Lord, I wish I was an onion. And I, Lord, I wish you was the stew. What he was saying was, instead of making my own choices and doing the things that I might be led to do, Lord, you be the chef, you be the cook, and I will be one of the ingredients in the dish that you want to cook up. I just want to be a part of what you are doing. I want to be your servant. Now, that's really what Paul is suggesting because when he talks about becoming a slave to righteousness, and a slave to God. Instead of deciding this is the way it will be and I follow my own path, I say, Lord, you be in charge and I'll just be a part of what you're doing and then I know you, you'll bless me. Lord, I wish it was a raisin. I like that. I wish you was the dough. Lord, I know you could make a good cookie out of me if I would just allow myself to be used by you Lord, another way, another image we could use, Lord, you be the potter. You, you make me into what you want me to be. Amen. And I, I will be your servant. All right? And uh, then it gets really interesting. Wish I was a catfish. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I wish you was the frying pan. Lord, I just jump in you and you cook me up the way you want. And I love those lyrics and I never miss those things on the bottom that I thought I would miss. How about that? You and I are called to make the choices to let God guide us, let God use us, let the Lord lead us, and then we can experience the rich, full life that God has in store. And that's really what Holy Communion today is about. You ever think about that? 
Jesus said, I will be a part of what you are doing, Father. If you want me to go and be a part of your salvation plan, then I will lay down my life and I will serve you. When we take up the bread and we take up the cup, what we're doing is remembering the choices that Jesus made to be a slave of God's righteousness. And uh, the Christian story is that God uh, raised him up from the dead and he is seated at the right hand of God. That is the calling for me, and that is the calling for you today. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. Now Adler and Hearn are going to come and do a couple of songs that will help us to prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion. Well, it's so special to be back here with this morning. It's like a reunion um, to see so many familiar faces. And Look over and remember my father being here years ago, tuned the spirit piano, and uh, my mom and dad are still living up in Carthage, Missouri. They lived out here. I think that was probably the last time they got to come visit. Go there. Um, so I just wanted to say, to acknowledge how special it is to be among you this morning. And thank you for inviting us to be a part of the service. Mm -hmm. So nice to meet you. Holy Spirit, come down on me. Make my life a symphony. Take my blindness and let me see. Holy Spirit, come down on me. You know my heart. You know my thoughts. You still love me in spite of it all. Some days I'm weak, I play the game. Some days I can't even call your name. Holy Spirit, come down on me. Make my life a symphony. Take my blindness and let me see. Holy Spirit, come down on me. Sometimes I fake it, I don't even pray. Even then, you don't go away. I have your spirit living in me. I am a prisoner who's been set free. Holy Spirit, come down. Try that with 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. River of peace flow through me. River of peace, take my hand. River of peace, take my hand. When sorrow holds my soul, may the soothing waters flow.
we who are broken might be made whole again. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was poured out for the forgiveness of our sin. Praise be to God. Joseph, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is broken for you. Take and eat. And the blood of Jesus is poured out for you. Drink it and let your life be refreshed. this holy meal, knowing the great love of God, and that God would like to feed us all with good things. Won't you come now? <laughs>
Thank you so much. And that would be a good idea. 